Okay, let's go ahead and figure out this math problem. And uh, by the looks of it, it doesn't look to be overly difficult. Of course, we have some basic operations. The numbers aren't fractions, they're not decimals. It doesn't seem to be too difficult, but here's the deal. If you're not careful, you can easily make a mistake. And we're gonna make this problem extra fun because we're gonna do it without the aid of a calculator. So a lot of you might be distressed about that. You're like, what are you talking about? Uh, you know, I don't do any math without my calculator. Well, listen, what happens if you don't have your calculator? or you don't have your cell phone available. I know a lot of us get spoiled with technology, myself included, but you have to practice mathematics without a calculator. Matter of fact, if uh, some of you are math students out there, oftentimes in your exams, you'll, be have, uh, you'll have two parts to your exams. One part will be without a calculator, another part your teacher will let you use a calculator, but this problem is going to be nice and easy, so don't distress, but uh, if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and pause the video, put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the solution to this in just one second, and then of course I'm gonna solve this step by step, and we're gonna highlight some very important principles uh, in mathematics, okay, that all math students need to be, you know, uh, aware of when they're solving any math problems. Of course, I'm going to get to all that in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. And the answer is 45, all right? So we have five times one plus bracket, three times nine minus one, all that divided by three bracket and parentheses. The answer is 45. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let me give you a nice little be, uh, happy face, uh, check mark, an A plus, a 100%, and we'll give you some stars so you can have an extra special day, nice job, okay? All right, so let's get into the problem here. And uh, I'm gonna set this up by first just kind of taking an assessment of what's going on, right? So we have a math problem, we wanna solve it. And what we have is we have to do these various math operations. So this right here, when we have a number outside of a parenthesis right there, that's multiplication. So we're gonna do some multiplication. And then here we obviously have addition. So we're gonna have to do some addition. Here I have multiplication again. Here is, of course, subtraction, and then we have division. So I have to deal with um, all these various math operations, okay? These are called mathematical operators, uh, multiplication, addition, uh, subtraction, and division. So here's the thing. Depending on the order, okay, the, uh, in terms of how I do this problem, what order I do it, I can come up with all sorts of various numbers as my final answer. Matter of fact, some of you actually came up with different numbers other than 45 because you probably took um, a different order, okay? There's only one specific order to do these operations, um, you know, to get the actual correct answer. And that order is called the order of operations, right? Just like a genius title, right? Somebody said, hey, you know what? Let's call it the order of operations. And what operations are we talking about? Well, it's not the operations that you get at the hospital. Like, hey, we'll first do a heart surgery and then we'll, we'll do a hip replacement. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about these operators, right? The order of operations. And uh, we have a nice little thing called, well, these are this is called a mnemonic, right? The PEMDAS. You've probably heard of this. If you haven't heard of this, I can tell you right now, your grandparents probably heard of this. And um, one uh, kind of uh, old school saying that a lot of people remember this by is the following. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I don't know who came up with it, but that's a pretty uh, common little uh, memory device to remember this little acronym, PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. So there's a couple different variations. There are a couple different acronyms uh, little uh, that are different than this, but this is probably the, the most common PEMDAS. Order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but what does this mean? Well, I'm gonna explain that to you right now, okay? And I'm, I'm explaining this to you because I wanna give you an opportunity to apply what I'm gonna kinda teach you, just in case you made an error. Okay, so the P stands for parentheses. So you're gonna do what's inside parentheses, and that P is what we call grouping symbols. So it's more than just parentheses, it's also brackets. So these brackets right here 
are what we consider parentheses, okay? Well, they're not parentheses, they're called brackets, but they're technically grouping symbols, and also these little squiggly things like that would classify, um, be classified as well as a grouping symbol. So you're gonna do what's in, um, you're gonna do parentheses first, but I'm gonna explain a little bit more about this in a second. Let's just kind of go through this acronym. E is exponents, but this is like power. It's like two to the third power. That little three is an exponent, so you do powers next. Now, M is multiplication, and then D is division. Now here, this is probably one of the most confused um, things about the order of operations. So many students get these problems incorrect because they confuse the M and D and the A and the S. A and S stands for addition and subtraction. So what you're gonna do is you're going to do this from left to right. We're gonna go from left to right, but here's the deal. With multiplication and division, you're gonna do whatever you see first from left to right, okay? If I see multiplication, uh, let's say I had, you know, 10 times 2 divided by uh, 3, for example. Here, what do I see first uh, from left to right? I see multiplication first. That's what I'm going to do next. Okay, I'm going to do this uh, right here, and then I'll divide. But what if the problem was reversed? What if I had uh, 10 divided by 2 times 3? So this is where so many students make mistakes. They're like, oh, I got to do multiplication because multiplication comes uh, before division. I have to do M before D. Always, always, always. I'll do this right there. And guess what? They get it totally wrong. You can see if you did this, you would have uh, 2 times 3. This would be 10 divided by 6. That would be that fraction or that decimal. It's totally wrong. Okay, That's not correct. What do we have to do? You have to do this, right? You have to do, uh, this is what you see first from left to right. So 10 divided by 2 is, of course, 5. 5 times 3. The correct answer is 15. All right, so already right now, if you um, weren't quite sure uh, about the order of operations, you already are going to be well ahead of the average math student because so many students don't understand this as well as they think uh, they do. But anyways, now that I kind of explained this, let's talk a little bit more about the, um, the structure of this problem, uh, particularly with the P. Okay, remember P stands for parentheses, but it means grouping symbols. But what that really means is you're going to... Um, do what's inside the parentheses, uh, parentheses or brackets, and you're going to work from the inside out, the most inner parentheses, and then you're just going to keep expanding. So you're going to start from here, and you're just going to kind of work out this way, keep working out, keep working out. So here's the deal. I'm going to show you how to do this problem, okay? So with, uh, But I'm not going to do it just yet because I want to give you a chance to uh, get the answer correct is you're saying, okay, P, is, uh, I have parentheses, so what are the most inner parentheses? So I gotta do this. Once I'm done with this, now I'm gonna keep expanding to the next set of parentheses. I'm gonna do this stuff, and then I'll keep expanding out to this, and then finally, I'll uh, multiply that by five, okay? And along the way, I'm gonna be asking myself, do I have this, do I have this? And I'm gonna be keeping uh, you know, my um, awareness on these operations, especially from left to right, is particularly multiplication, division, and addition, and subtraction. Okay, so if you think you made an error, and you're like, oh no, I know where I made a mistake, go ahead and maybe redo this problem. It's not that difficult to do. Uh, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this right now. Okay, so again, now that we understand PEMDAS, sort of operations, I'm looking here, I'm like, okay, I got my parentheses, inner, uh, most parentheses, I'm scanning the problem, so I got to focus on this right here. So 9 minus 1 is 8. Okay, so you notice I'm writing this one step at a time, and that's exactly what you should be doing too. Just take, you know, write one line, one step, and there you go. All right, so now here is my problem. And I'm looking, okay, I have parentheses, but there's nothing to do inside these parentheses. So this is basically done. So this is the same thing as 3 times 8. And now the parentheses I have to work within is this right here. So I have multiplication and division. This time multiplication comes uh, uh, from left to right is first. So I'm going to do 3 times 8, which, of course, is 24. Okay, so again... Just take a step and write one step on your paper. Don't do too many steps uh, at once because that's how you cause confusion and your teacher can't uh, determine whether you know what you're doing or not. All right, so here is my brackets. I still have stuff to do inside these innermost, uh, innermost uh, grouping symbols or parentheses. These are brackets. And uh, the technical difference between parentheses and brackets really isn't much, okay? 
Uh, I could have just wrote parentheses, have parentheses within parentheses, but typically we'll write brackets and whatnot just to kind of distinguish um, one from another so you don't get confused. All right, so here we're down to 24 divided by 3 is 8. Okay, so now we have our final parentheses. We got to work on 1 plus 8, of course, is 9. And then we have 5 times 9. This is multiplication right here, a number outside like this. Uh, this means multiplication. 5 times 9 is a 45. Of course, I know all of you know that. And there you go. All right. So, again, what's the point of a problem like this? Is it to just do the problem just to, you know, get some answer? No, nah, not really. Okay. The point of a problem like this is to really strengthen your understanding of managing, um, you know, numeric expressions. Okay. Things with a lot of different operators or multiplication. Uh, subtraction division and this is the same um, stuff that you're going to need to know for algebra okay so a lot of people think oh once i um, finish with arithmetic i could just do all that with my calculator and then continue on in algebra and not worry about it i'm telling you right now you need to remember these rules for the long run in mathematics and uh, it's pretty common that a lot of students make a lot of mistakes in algebra classes and beyond because they truly didn't really and learn this stuff as well as they should have. So that's why I stress, you know, anytime you're doing mathematics, go nice and slow, you know, take things step by step. And if you participated in this problem, let's say you got it wrong, and but you were actually pretty good about writing each step out, you know, you know, you probably have a pretty good idea where you made your error, all right? Making mistakes is an excellent thing, okay? Because it's, if you're writing things down, that's how we learn is by make, making mistakes, identifying or, you know, uh, confusion, okay? And, and this is the point where you're like, oh, right here is what I don't understand. And if you correct that, then guess what? Now you understand everything else. The worst thing is, is like, I don't even know what I don't know, right? <laughs> well, if you just look at this problem, you don't try to take steps going forward, you know, your teacher or yourself, you'll never be able to kind of figure out what you uh, need to work on, okay? So that's why, you know, when I uh, stress things like being neat and organized, all that stuff, and you practice that by, you know, taking great math notes, right? Your notes should be so perfect that, you know, you can give your notes to somebody else and they can actually learn math from your notes. That's how, how great your notes should be. Your homework should be excellent. It's your attitude towards it. If you're just kind of like, mm, so, 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 uh, you know, you're going to, just no way you're going to be able to get these answers right, especially with any um, you know, level of uh, more difficulty beyond a problem like this. But anyways, hopefully all this good stuff is, you know, to your benefit. And um, anyways, that's why I make these videos. If you need help with uh, math at this level, which is kind of arithmetic, basic math, I'm going to give you a couple suggestions. One, probably recommend like my pre-algebra course or my math foundations course. I also have a ton of videos on my, on my uh, YouTube channel that can help you out as well. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.